I'm sure you guys have all adjusted the brightness and contrast of a photo before, but inside of Lightroom we have a lot more tools for adjusting the brightness than just the brightness slider. There's a lot of ways you can make local adjustments and you have a ton of control over which parts of the photo are bright and dark. I'm gonna start off with a really extreme example for this first photo so that you guys can really see what I'm talking about here. So this silhouette photo was taken in RAW, which means if we bring the exposure up, we're going to be able to salvage all of these details that were in the shadows here. But when you do this, um, when you're just bringing up the exposure, you're gonna lose all of the details in the sky. They just get blown out. So let's double click on that exposure to bring it back down. And instead, I'm gonna come down here to this shadows slider. This slider will only adjust the exposure of the shadowed areas. So if I bring that all the way up, you can see the shadows getting brighter without the sky getting brighter. However, I just maxed out this slider. I can't take it up anymore, but I want to continue brightening this foreground. So I'm gonna resort to going back to the exposure and bringing that up just enough to where we can see the foreground here. Now, the sky is starting to get a little too bright again, and we can adjust that by going to the highlights. And this works just like the shadows slider does, but it only affects the brightness of the highlights in your photos. You can see how this could really brighten up the sky or darken it back down. So I'm gonna bring that all the way back down and maybe even bring up the exposure in this photo a little bit more until everything evens out. Now, one of the side effects of doing this is that we start to lose the contrast of the photo. And I don't want all the contrast to be gone because it'll look kind of flat and unnatural. So I'm gonna compensate by bringing up the contrast a bit. And this is bringing up the contrast of the entire photo. So the sky will get more contrasted and the shadows will be more contrasty as well. If I wanted to do that um, a bit more, I could even come to the blacks, and this blacks slider works kind of the same way as the shadows slider does, but it only affects the darkest of the dark areas. So you can see how I could brighten up the really dark areas here. There's really not much detail left in there, but um, if I wanted to make the photo a little bit more contrast, I can bring that down a bit like that. So here's a quick tip for next time you're out taking photos. If you want to take a photo like the one that we just edited, you need to take it in RAW. RAW files give you more ability to lighten up shadows without getting grain. Now there is still grain in the photo in the shadows when we brightened them up, but not nearly as much as there would have been if we had just taken that in a JPEG file. Now the other thing you should do if you're taking a sunset picture is exposed for the sky and not the foreground. Let me show you what I mean. If we exposed for the foreground, like this, and now try to edit that in Lightroom, you won't be able to salvage as much of the details in the highlights. Even in a raw photo, there's just not as much information saved in the highlights. But if we do that the other way around and we expose for the sky and take a picture like this, now when we edit this photo in Lightroom, we will be able to bring up the brightness of those shadows and still have detail there. So in a raw photo, it seems like there's more information saved in dark areas than in light areas. So when you're actually taking the photo, expose for the brightest part of the photo and not the darkest part. Now, another one of the side effects of brightening up a photo this much is you'll notice we start to get a lot of grain introduced into the darker parts of the photo. And you can compensate for that by coming down here to details. And we have a noise reduction slider. Now, if you bring that up too much, we'll lose all of our details. That doesn't look good. So I'll leave this somewhere in the middle and this eliminates quite a bit of the grain. So let's look, here's before, here's after. Doesn't get rid of it all, but definitely gets rid of a decent amount of it. And when we zoom back out, I'm noticing that the grass looks particularly kind of glowy and we've lost a lot of the details because of that noise reduction. So I might compensate for that by coming to the effects panel and bringing up the texture just a bit. 
So here you can see before and after. So this is the first basic technique that you guys can start using to make local adjustments in the brightness of your photo. Now what I did in this photo where I took the shadows and it brightened them all the way up and took the highlights all the way down isn't like a special technique that you should go and apply to every single one of your photos. A lot of your photos are already going to have great exposure right out of camera, so you wouldn't need to do this. And sometimes you might even do the exact opposite. You might bring the highlights up and the shadows down to make it more contrasted. So I'm not trying to show you a specific thing that you should do to your photo, but rather showing you the tools that are available to you now. So instead of just affecting the brightness slider, which will affect the entire photo, next time you go to brighten a photo, you can now think through whether or not you want to brighten or darken the shadows, or whether you want to brighten or darken the highlights, and you can now do that separately. So let's go ahead and move on to the next technique that you can use in making local adjustments to the brightness of your photo. So another way that you can make local adjustments to the lighting is by using the gradient tool. There's a radial gradient, there's a linear gradient, and there's also a brush tool where you can just manually brush in which part of the photo you want to affect. With this first photo, I'm going to start out with the radial gradient. So I can click out here in the middle, and what I want to do here is brighten up all the beans, the coffee beans that are in the bottom of this coffee mug so that your eye is drawn right into the center of the photo. Now if you um, hold your mouse over the top of your gradient here, it will highlight in red and you can see which parts of the photo have been selected. And you can adjust the feather edge. If we turn this all the way down, you're going to see there's no feathering along the edge there. I'm going to turn this up to like 27% right there. And now you're going to see all the same adjustments. You have your exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks that you can all adjust, but they'll only be adjusted inside of your local adjustment that you just made. So in this case scenario, I think I'm going to go ahead and bring the shadows up a little bit. And then maybe just bring up the overall exposure a bit in there as well, and maybe add a bit of contrast. There you go. So here you can see before and after. Now let's try out the linear gradient tool. Say I wanted to just affect the brightness of the road in this photo. This is where I could bring in the linear gradient tool. Whoops, I have it upside down there. Let's flip it around. The red just shows what's being selected and I can move it down here. And now I can adjust the exposure of the road. Maybe make it a bit darker so it draws less attention to itself and draws your eye more towards the sun flare in this photo. And now last of all, let's go ahead and try out that brush tool on this photo. If I just want to brighten up this water bottle, this would be the perfect spot to use the brush tool. Now if I just come in here and start brushing away with this, it's going to be really difficult to only select the water bottle and not accidentally get some of the grass in the background there. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. So come over here and you'll see auto mask. Make sure that is turned on. So the auto mask kind of detects where the edges of objects are and won't allow your selection to go over that. And now you can see it's much easier to select this water bottle without accidentally getting that grass in the background there because the auto select was detecting the edge of the water bottle here and not allowing the selection to grab the background. Now I can click over here and it will select it, but it's smart enough to know that when I'm dragging the brush along the edge of the water bottle here, it knows to stop at the edge of the water bottle and not keep going. So now that that selection has been made, again, we can just come over here and maybe raise up the exposure a bit, or bring up the shadows, bring up the highlights. Now this water bottle is kind of losing its color the more I brighten it, so I'm actually going to come down here to saturation and bring up that saturation some too to bring the orange color back in 
to the water bottle so that it's not losing color just because it's getting brighter. I might as well go ahead and select the water bottle lid while I'm at it too. And there you go. Here's before, and here's after. The gradient masks and the brush tool are really handy, but they definitely have their limitations. So I'm going to be showing you an even more powerful tool you can use for making local adjustments. Let's take a look at this photo right here. Say I wanted to adjust the exposure of just the buildings in this photo. Now you could take the selection brush like I was showing you before and manually make a selection of the building. But this is going to take a long time, it's really tedious, and it's not very accurate. It's really easy to accidentally go off the edge and then you'd have to go back and tediously erase that bit that you went off the edge there. So there's a way easier way to do this, especially when you're working with different colors in a photo. So the building is red. So all we actually have to do if we want to adjust the brightness is come up here to the colors panel and you can select each of these individual colors and individually adjust the luminance of these colors. So if we wanted to adjust the brightness of the building, well, it's mostly red. So we could select red and we could either darken it or brighten it. I think I'm going to brighten it for now. And maybe I want these hills in the background to be either brighter or darker as well. And you might be thinking, well, those aren't really a color, it's just gray. But even gray in a photo usually has a little bit of color in it, and usually you'll find with gray that there's a tinge of blue. So I'm going to select blue, and if we start adjusting the luminance, you're going to see, sure enough, that is perfectly adjusting the brightness of the mountains in the background. That is so cool. So we can make maybe the mountains dark and the buildings light, or you could do it the opposite way around. We could brighten these mountains in the background and darken the building, just giving contrast between the two so that the building stands out. And it works actually either way, whether you want the building to be bright and the mountains dark or vice versa. Either way is going to make that building stand out and pop out of the picture. And then we can even make more local adjustments if we want to. Um, each of the colors, you can just go through and manipulate the luminance, and you'll see which parts of the photo it's adjusting. So if I select green, you're going to see it's just affecting these couple of trees right over here. And then with orange, it's going to mainly affect, well, the entire foreground has some orange in it, so it's affecting that, and also this tree over here. Sorry, that looks really weird. Let's get rid of that. But yeah, mainly affecting this building and the background is what I wanted to do in this image, and it was super easy to separate the two and adjust them individually by using our color select panel. So these are the fundamental tools that I use for adjusting the brightness of my photo on a regular basis. Actually, there is one other tool we should look at here really quick. That's this vignette tool. You can use this to create darkness or brightness along the edges of your photo. If you do it too much, it just looks absolutely weird, but um, usually if I'm using it, it's just super subtle, even to the point to where you really don't see it at all. But it's just enough to where your subconscious will kind of tell you to look towards the middle of the photo. So that's it for this video. If you guys want to learn more about photography and filmmaking, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. Go watch some more of my videos right here, and I'll see you guys all next time.